in Jesus' precious name. Father, we thank you for this moment. Breathe upon your word. Touch somebody's life. And let not one person live here the same way. In Jesus' precious name. I believe that God has healed people, delivered people, liberated people. And I know that your life will never remain the same. The atmosphere of God's presence is the atmosphere of the supernatural. And the supernatural is happening to you this morning. This morning, we shall be handling the anointing at the end of the service, the unction to function. But in the meanwhile, we are looking at the subject vision and glory. It's our month of vision for greater glory. And we want to see the connection between vision and the glory before we move into the anointing. Ezekiel chapter 8 and in verse 4. And behold, the glory of God the glory of the God of Israel was there according to the vision that I saw in the play. The glory of the God of Israel was there according to the vision that I saw in the play. Our objective is to understand the connection between vision and the glory. Ezekiel saw glory according to vision. The way of vision is the way of the glory. The way of vision is the way of the glory. And people of vision walk in the glory. If you are a person of vision, you must experience the glory. Example, Joseph was a man of vision who walked in unusual glory. Paul the Apostle was a man of vision who also walked in the glory. The question is, how is vision connected to the glory? First, vision is insight into God's plan and purpose for one's life. Insight into God's plan and purpose. For one's life. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. He said, I know the thoughts or the plans I have for you. Plans of good and not of evil. To give you an expected end. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. He said, before I formed you. In the belly I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb. I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet to the nations. What we call vision is insight into God's plan and purpose for one's life. When you know what God wants you to do with your life, and you picture that insight, it is called vision. But this is the point. When the purpose of God is known, when the purpose of God is followed, the glory flows. Say it the other way. Where the purpose of God is followed, where the plan and purpose, or the plan, purpose, and pattern of God is followed, 
the glory flows. A man of vision is a person who has insight into the plan and the purpose of God for his life. He knows what God wants. He has an idea of what God wants him to do with his life. As he follows that plan, that purpose, and that pattern, the glory flows. If you don't struggle with the plan of God for your life, and you don't struggle with the pattern of God for your life, you will never struggle for the glory. Before Moses, now I'll give you two examples first. The tabernacle in the wilderness was built according to plan. And as it was built according to plan, the glory fell on it naturally. Exodus chapter 29, uh, sorry, 25 verse 9. Take up the bow. According to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle, and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make it. God was telling Moses, make everything according to the pattern that I have showed you. In Exodus 25 and in verse 40, he said it again. And look that you make them after their pattern, which was showed you in the mountain. He was talking to Moses. So Moses built the tabernacle according to pattern. Then what happened? Exodus chapter 40 verse 33 and 34. He said, and he reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate. So Moses finished the work. Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses did not need to pray for the cloud to come. Moses did not need to pray for the glory to fall. Provided he followed the pattern, the glory fell naturally. Am I communicating? If you follow, if you follow the pattern of God for your life, if you are able to understand what is God's plan for your life, and you follow that pattern for your life, you don't need to beg for the glory to fall. Follow the pattern of God for your career. Follow the plan of God for your marriage. Follow the plan of God for your business. Follow the plan of God for your life assignment. You don't need to beg for the glory to fall. The glory will fall naturally if the pattern and the plan is followed. Am I communicating? If I drop the microphone here, I have already finished the service. Already finished the service. Have you ever seen a marriage that you can say, this is glorious, pattern was followed? Have you ever seen a ministry you can say, this is glorious, a pattern was followed? Have you ever seen a destiny and you say, I like this life. It is glorious. A pattern was followed. Follow the pattern I showed you and you won't need to beg for the glory. And insight into that pattern, insight into that plan is what is called vision. When you are at the place where you have some understanding, may not be all of it, but you have an idea. You have an idea of what God wants you to do with your life. And you are following that idea, following that plan, following that pattern. Then, you will see the glory. Somebody say amen. And number two, the temple of Solomon. God gave Solomon, or rather, he gave David, the father of Solomon, the plan of a temple that was to be built. And we see that in 1 Chronicles 28, 11 to 12. 1 Chronicles chapter 28, verse 11 to verse 12. He said, then David gave to Solomon, his son, the pattern of the porch and of the houses thereof and of the treasuries thereof and of the upper chambers thereof. 
Solomon gave, David gave to Solomon, is giving to Solomon the pattern of the temple and of the inner palace thereof and of the place of the mercy seat. And the pattern of all that he had by the spirit of the courts of the house of the Lord and of all the chambers round about of the treasuries of the house of God and of the treasuries of the dedicated things and all that he gave it to Solomon and Solomon built according to this pattern. Then in 2 Chronicles chapter 5 verse 13 to 14 when they were building that house that was built according to heavenly pattern, the glory came. It came even to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord saying for he is good for his mercy endured forever that then the house was filled with the cloud even the house of the Lord so the priest could not stand to minister by the reason of the cloud for the glory of the Lord has filled the house of God somebody say amen hallelujah David gave to Solomon the pattern and Solomon built according to the pattern and the glory fell. There is nothing you want to prove in life trying to follow your own plan. It doesn't take anywhere. There is nothing you are going to achieve in life trying to excuse God and do what you feel like doing with your life. It doesn't lead nowhere. Vision means accessing God's purpose and plan for your life. And when you follow that purpose and follow that pattern, the glory falls. Somebody say amen. Lift up your right hand and say, Father. And I want the ICT to complete that statement. And when the purpose is followed, the glory flows. Hallelujah. Vision is insight into God's plan and purpose for one's life. And when the purpose is followed, the glory flows. Now, number two, how does vision bring about the glory? Number two, vision brings light. And light brings both glory and shining. Vision brings light. And light brings both glory and shining. What is the meaning of that? If you follow God's plan and purpose for your life, you have access to revelational light. There are things you will see that others can't see. Vision brings light. That was what the Bible said in Matthew chapter 6 verse 22. If your eye is single, your body will be full of light. If you are a man, a woman with vision, with purpose, your body will be full of light. You will have revelation. You will have direction. You will know steps to take. And when your light come, you shine. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Arise, shine, for your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. So if you follow the purpose of God for your life, you follow the plan of God for your life, you follow the pattern of God for your life, you will, be, you will be connected to light, revelation, insight. And when your light comes, you shine. There is glory. When you know what to do, you shine out in life. When you know the steps to take, the glory, can, you can't escape the glory. It is when people are doing trial and error and living at random and hit and miss, hit and miss. That is where they cannot be assured of the glory. That is, that is where they cannot be assured of distinction. But if and when you are sure, when you are, you are a man of vision, following the purpose of God for your life, you connect with light. And when that light comes, you shine. Two examples. Number one, Daniel. Daniel was a man of vision and purpose. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. The Bible said Daniel proposed in his heart. He was a man of purpose. He knew what God wanted him to do. He was not going to eat the idol dedicated foods of Babylon. 
because that was not part of his life and he, he was a man of purpose and at the end of his life he was a man of light Daniel chapter 5 verse 11 the Bible said concerning Daniel there is a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the Holy God in the days of your father light was in this man and then in verse 14 again they talked about Daniel a man of light he said I have heard of thee that the spirit of the gods is in thee and that light and understanding an excellent wisdom is found in this. So every time a person is a man of vision, he's a man of light. He's a man of revelation. That is, in, in no steps to take and moves to make. And when that happens, he, he stands and he shines. Another example is Paul the Apostle. Paul the Apostle is a man, was a man who had the, an abundance, or rather, he was a man of vision. In Acts chapter 26, verse 19, Paul was telling King Agrippa, he said, whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. He had a heavenly vision. And because he had vision, was a man of purpose, revelation flow. Galatians chapter 2 verse 2, he said, I went up by revelation. I went up by revelation. I went up by revelation. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 a Paul the apostle speaking said I he had an abundance 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 a he had an abundance of revelation lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation. Abundance of revelation. He was a man of abundant direction, abundant light. Because he was a man of purpose. Is God speaking to anybody here? Say amen. And so, if you have vision, it means you have insight into God's plan for your life. And when the plan of God is followed, the glory flows. If you have vision, you have light. And when light comes, you shine. When light comes, you move in glory. Thirdly, vision brings provision and possession which are departments of the glory. Vision, in bracket, divine purpose, brings provision and possession. And those are departments of the glory. That is, a man of vision, a woman of vision, is a person with provision and possession. You can't have the vision and lack the provision. You can't have the vision and not possess the possession. When the vision of this house was given by God, everything that needed to finish it was given, even in the midst of recession. Am I communicating? You cannot have the vision and lack the provision. We built for it just, let me call it a few months. Maybe around 36 months or so. And there, is, and there was nobody in the whole church under pressure. Nobody stopped coming to church because offering was too much. They were calling people to give too much, too much. Nobody. Why? Vision guarantees provision and guarantees possession if god sends you he pays your bills if you send yourself you pay for it he sent me i have not been paying he has been paying somebody say amen and what what does the, how is this connected to what we are talking about? Vision brings provision and possession. And they are departments of the glory. The glory covers supplies. Huh? Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches that is inside glory. His riches in glory. His riches contained in glory. 
So vision connects you to, to the supply department of glory. The provision department of glory. Haggai chapter 2 verse 8 to 9. It says, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, say the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former. The silver is mine. The gold is mine. And the glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former. Where there is glory, there is provision. And where there is vision, there is provision. So vision pulls the glory. God spoke to Abraham. Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 and 15. He said, lift up your eyes. And the Lord said unto Abraham, after that Lot was separated from him, lift up now your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward and southward and eastward and westward for all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it. And to thy seed forever. When you can see it, God can give it. If you can see it, God can give it. Somebody say a loud amen. Do we have examples of people who got provision because of vision? Very well. Example number one, Abraham. I already mentioned it. Genesis chapter 13 verse 14 and 15. Abraham was a man of vision who exploded in the realm of abundance in life. Abraham, we saw his abundance in Genesis chapter 24 verse 1 and verse 35. And Abraham was old and God blessed him in everything. Example number two, Joseph. Joseph was a man of vision. In Genesis 37 verse 5 to 8 and in verse 9, Joseph kept on dreaming dreams about the future. He kept on seeing what others could not see. And when that future arrived, Joseph was put in charge of a whole country. In Genesis chapter 41 and in verse 39 to 44, he was put in charge of a whole country. A man of vision today is a man in charge tomorrow. He was put in charge of a whole country, put in charge of the resources of a whole nation, put in charge of the supplies of a whole nation. I see God putting somebody in charge in this season. If you are that one, say a louder amen. amen. If you are the one, say a louder amen. amen. If you are the one, shout the loud most amen. amen. So what have we said so far? First and foremost, vision gives you insight into God's plan and purpose for your life. And when the purpose is followed, the glory flows. And then we say that vision brings light. And light brings both glory and shining. And then we say vision brings provision and possession. And these are departments of the glory. In conclusion, how do you walk in vision to connect the glory? Want the glory of God to explode in your life? To be made manifest in your life? How do you connect vision to explode in the glory? Number one. Find out God's plan and purpose for your life. Find out God's plan and purpose for your life. There is nobody that is on this earth by accident. Nobody is here for the fun of it. Jeremiah 1, 5, before I formed thee, I knew thee. And, I, and before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nation. I know the thoughts I think towards you. So I, he has some thoughts about you. Jeremiah 29, 11. There is something God is thinking about you. Something he is thinking about you. Something he is thinking about you. Something is thinking about you. You are not created by an absent-minded God. Yeah. 
Somebody say amen. My mother told me that when she was six months pregnant for me, carrying me six months, somebody brought a basin in the dream filled with bottles of oil, plenty, in a basin. You know the kind of oil that they pour on children's head in, when they are born, like um, palm kernel oil and those other, diverse kinds of oil in a basin full. And the person said that this oil is for the head of this baby. That is what the Bible says. Say, Before I formed you, I knew you. Take your seat. So she said she was surprised because normally one bottle would have been enough. Why are you bringing a basin filled with different bottles of oil and he said it's for the head of this baby. When I was nine years old, my junior brother was seven years old, we took ourselves to the Methodist church where we were worshiping and submitted our name for special number. And we had, there was no record of singing for any reason. Not even practice singing at home. And just presented yourself to the priest and said, I want to sing. And submitted name for prayer, uh, what do you call it? Special number. And they gave us chance to sing. What I, we sang that day, I, it, there's nothing you can do to make me remember it. I am fully aware that it will be out of point. I'm fully aware of that. But inside there was something that was craving. A divine purpose that was bottled on the inside. Something that was craving for something. Something that was craving for release. Something that was craving for expression. Something that was craving because before I formed thee, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth, I ordained you as a prophet to the nation. See, take your seat. I can get, go over the stories over and over. My mom that told me again, he said one day she was talking with somebody that could be her mother. And when I came, I, I began to talk to both of them. I see if I knew the relationship and the woman at a small age. I was saying, how does he know our relationship right from that childhood? Find out God's, at times we try to miss road and try to do many things, but God still tries to pull us back into what is purpose. I, I trained her to be a medical doctor. I'm a trained medical doctor. I'm licensed as a medical doctor. But I have this purpose to be here where I am. Papo Yedeko said, when he was a child, first of all, he was born inside church. That is, labor caught his mother and was born inside church. So don't be surprised where he is. He took himself to the carpenter in the neighborhood and asked him to manufacture a rod for him. Carpenter said, for what? He said, do it first. So he was like age 11, 11 or 12 or something. But after the carpenter has done the rod, he said, now, nah, this is the rod of Moses. I will use it to deliver people. To, to take God's people from captivity. There was no trace of any calling. What I'm saying is, it is not compulsory that everybody will pastor. Donald Trump said when he was a baby, he used to pile up play blocks and use it to build skyscrapers. His own kind of play was skyscraper building with blocks. And when he, when he came up, his signature became properties and towers. You are aware of Trump towers everywhere. Lord, if 
find out God's purpose for your life. That is the first thing. Checking, we'll go into details of finding this out in the course of this month as the time permits us. Number two, make God's purpose for your life your own purpose for yourself. You find out what God wants you to do with your life and you make it your purpose as well. Someone is lying down there, he's praying. The spirit fell on him while the preaching is on. In the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2, he said, speak Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2. From verse 1 he said, I will stand up on my tower and I will watch to see what he will say to me. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run. That read it. That he may run. First, write it upon tables. Make God's purpose your purpose. Align your life with God's purpose. Let me want what you want, oh my dear Lord. Let me love what you love, oh dear Lord. That is how you designed life to be loved. Help me love to live how I ought to live. Let me love what you want, oh my dear Lord. Let me love what you love, oh dear Lord. That is how you design life to be loved. Help me love to live how I ought to live. Oh Lord, take me to the place where I have no will that is separate from you. Oh, oh Lord, take me to the place where I have no choice that is separate from your choice to be lost in you, to be loved in you is my desire. To be all for you is all I want. Take me to the place, oh Lord, take a Shabbat. One day I went to God 
I say, Lord, everybody is saying this is their vision. This is their vision. This person say, my vision is to build houses for widows, to do this and that. This person say, my vision is this. This one say, my vision is that. I say, Lord, what is my own vision? Can you tell me what my vision is? Let, so let me know what to pursue. And he says something to me I will never forget for life. He said, let my vision, that is his own vision, let my vision be your vision. Wow. Really? All right, Lord, what is your vision? Then he began to fall like rain. Power of God is everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Lord, take me to the place where I have no will that is separate from your will. Lord, take me to my to be all for you is all I want. Take me to the place, oh. Take me to the place. to build your life and your pursuit around God's purpose for your life. Find out God's plan. Make that plan your plan. Build your life. Build your pursuit around God's purpose for your life. You will never regret. I have not regretted it. You will never regret. You build your life. You build your, purpose, your pursuit in life around God's purpose. For your life. That was Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2. That he may run. Run means pursue. 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 All you want me to be in life I must be. What you want me to do I must do. Where you want me to reach I must reach. What you want me to have I must have. Build your life around God's purpose. Lift up your hands and begin to speak to God this morning. Oh Lord, take me to the place where I have the will that is separate from your will. Oh Lord, take me to the place where I have no choice that is separate from your joy. To be lost in you 
Go ahead and talk to God. Thank you for his word and then proceed. Lord, I am available. Help me to access your plans for my life, your purpose for my life, your program for my destiny. In the name that is above every day, help me to access your plans for my life, your purpose for my life, your program for my destiny. Speak to God, Lord, I cannot do my own plan.
lift your voice. I cannot do my own will. Let me know what you want me to do in my life. And help me to do it, Lord. Oh, Lord, take me to the place where I am. We cry, Abba Father, Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. There are many people who are afraid. If I say, let the will, perfect will of God be done in my life, I may not enjoy my life. I may not 
do the things I want to do. Maybe I will, not, I will marry who I don't like. No. Never. Some of us have tried. The difference between those of us who follow the will of God and some who follow their minds and lives is not like heaven and earth. It's like heaven and hell. Heaven and hell. I have not regretted following God. I have not regretted marrying who he asked me to marry. I have not regretted answering his call. I am looking for more time to do all he wants me to do. No boring moment. Full of life. Energy. Give God a trial. How can the creature know what is best for, her, for him or her more than the creator? How can the product determine for the manufacturer what is best for the product? Waste of time. Lord, here I am. I want to give you a trial. I want to follow your will. I want to follow your plan. Everything in me that is insisting on my own will, let it die. I want to follow your plan and your purpose for my life. Lift your voice and speak to God. I receive the help. I receive the help. I receive the help. I receive the help. I receive that help. We cry, Abba Father. Jesus precious name. Hands are uplifted. The altar here is free for everyone who intend to give their lives to Jesus Christ today. And say, Pastor, I've tried to do my own will. I've tried to follow my own direction to live as I want. But it has not produced result and I know it will never produce. I want to hand myself over to God. I want to make my ways right with God. I want my sins forgiven. I want today to mark a new day for me. Quickly pick your Bible and your bag. Take the... Oh Lord, take me to that place from verse 2. Quickly pick your Bibles, pick your bags. And come right rushing to the front as you give yourself to God. I'll give you the count of seven. Carry your Bibles, carry your bags, and quickly come forward. One. Verse two.
right hand on your chest, those of you in the front. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, I come before you today. I ask for help. I ask for mercy. I receive the grace to live for you, Jesus, to do your will. Help me, Lord, to live for you. Today it is my decision to follow you forward ever, backward never. Thank you, Master, in Jesus' name. I pray for you today. I declare the hold of the enemy broken off your life. Grace is released upon you. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Our counselors are around you. They are going to go with you, sit down with you, and you with them till after the service, where they will share briefly with you what you